Greetings, everyone. We're back with Search for a Nonviolent Future, and we are at a dramatic moment in the book uh, because Chapter 6 deals with the signature contribution, if you will, of the Meta Center to the world of nonviolent action today, and that is to discover the importance uh, of constructive program, the tremendous importance that Gandhi gave to it, and to trace the development of his confidence in constructive program, uh, which he actually began in 1894, only the first year of his political activity in South Africa. And I start this chapter with a rather dramatic little story about somebody coming to Gandhi in 1940 and saying, what's it going to take to really get our freedom now? And Gandhi says, phenomenal progress in spinning. So the rest of the chapter explores how and why he placed such tremendous confidence in this constructive work. And uh, now, uh, since uh, Search for a Nonviolent Future, back then we've enshrined the constructive program in the roadmap, uh, a major offering of the Meta Center for Strategy work. And in between personal empowerment and nonviolent resistance or satyagraha, there's a belt called constructive program. And we propose that people move sequentially in a swadeshi way, in a way that goes from the inner resource to the outer work, that we go from personal empowerment to constructive program and constructive program to resistance where it's needed. And uh, that each of these steps uh, is, provides a kind of limiting factor on the next one. So if you're full of anger, you haven't done your personal empowerment, it'll limit the effectiveness of your nonviolent work, generally speaking. If you haven't first tried to do what you can for your own community, it's going to be a limiting factor on your demanding somebody else do something for you. And uh, some nonviolent thinkers actually believe that that's kind of an act of violence to say, you've got to do this for me if you haven't first tried to do it yourself. So for reasons that are very kind of deeply philosophical and also extremely concrete and practical, constructive program builds up to a very important role. And uh, in another discovery that I made along the way is that that famous comment that both Gandhi and King make about the psychological dynamic of nonviolence, where it comes from, that in many cases it comes from anger, which is converted into a creative response and not expressed as anger. If you remember King's way of putting that was, we did not lead to outbursts of anger. We expressed anger under discipline for maximum effect. Well, a constructive program is perfect for that because if you go from constructive program, to, for, sorry, if you go from anger to doing some constructive work, it's a beautiful conversion of that anger into a positive force. So uh, I'd like to read to you a couple of chunks from this conversation. Uh, in terms of what we really need today, and uh, this is as true today as it was in Gandhi's day, what we really need in terms of uh, building the ferment and the mm, dissatisfaction into a movement, uh, we need to have, first of all, a real grasp of the nonviolence principle. I'm on page 166. A real grasp of the nonviolent principle, which will give us an articulate understanding of how to apply it. And you remember Gandhi saying, nonviolence is not the inanity it's been taken for. It may not be rocket science, but it is a science. And we need some overall design, some coherent but all embracing picture, which would help us feel that we're all working together, even if we're not working on the same project. So it was this breakthrough, this insight in this uh, section of the book where we're studying constructive program that led finally 
to the development of Roadmap. And I'd like to just close this episode with this uh, episode of Gandhi's life in 1928, where he visited the mills in uh, Ahmedabad in Gujarat, and he stood on the floor of the mills and actually uh, wept. So trying to penetrate what was going on in his mind, uh, you and I would have just seen these noisy clanking machines, but he saw, if you will, the structural violence and the greed that put them there. The city dweller exploiting the simple villager, the impersonal corporation replacing what had been a wide network of personal relationships, the craze for profit overwhelming the dignity of work. He saw all of that. And so his constructive program aimed, first of all, at restoring those natural, decentralized, human-based, human-scale systems. And he once said very um, forcefully, if you think that you're going to get India's freedom and then rebuild India's culture, you are dreaming. It's actually the other way around. By rebuilding India's culture, then it would be relatively easy to push back against the last uh, inhibitions, obstructions to our freedom. So that is an introduction to this uh, all-important subject of constructive program. Till next time.